Today we're going to look at a really nice functional equation that I found on the math stack exchange. So I bet this came from some math contest, although that wasn't really discussed on the post. So if you can find the origin of this problem, maybe post it in the comments. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We'd like to determine all continuous functions from real numbers to positive real numbers, satisfying the following equation. We have f of x plus f of x equals f of x. Okay, well, let's see how we might get started here. And really, the big idea that gets this whole thing started is to iterate this functional equation. Okay, so let's take f of x and rewrite it as f of x plus f of x. Great. But now what we'll do is, well, we're gonna apply this rule again, but we're gonna apply this rule again on all of this stuff that's inside of this function. So let's maybe go ahead and rewrite our functional equation over here in a way that makes it a little bit clearer for this circumstance. So notice our functional equation says f evaluated at orange box equals f evaluated at orange box plus f evaluated at orange box. And seeing it like that and applying this rule to, well, what we have right here, makes it like a little bit more transparent so we don't just have all of the X's floating around and playing lots of different rules. Okay, so let's do this. So this is gonna be F of, so we're gonna write the orange box, X plus F of X, and maybe let's put the box around it, good and then plus f of, well, that orange box again, which, like I said before, in this time, is being played by x plus f of x. Okay, nice. But now what we'll do is notice that in this second circumstance, we can apply our original functional equation and rewrite this whole second bit as f of x. So let's notice that that's gonna allow this whole thing to collapse to f of x plus f of x plus f of x, in other words, two times f of x. Okay, well, let's maybe list over here what we have seen so far. So we've seen that f of x is equal to f of x plus f of x, and it's also equal to f of x plus two times f of x. But there's probably nothing really special about the number two. Probably this holds for all maybe additions of new f of x terms inside of that function. And we can perhaps summarize that in the following claim, which we'll prove by induction. And that is, for all natural numbers in, we have f of x equals f of x plus n times f of x. Okay, now how are we gonna prove this? Well, if we're gonna prove things by induction, that means we need a base case. But observe that the base case is either the given functional equation, or if you're not comfortable with that, it could be this first thing that we proved. And then we need an induction hypothesis to do the induction step. Okay, so let's do that. So the induction step would start with something like this. Let's suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, we have, well, the statement holds. So in other words, f of x, equals f of x plus k times f of x. And then after that, we're gonna look at the next term. So we generally use like a kind of language like this. Let's consider the next case, which is f of x plus k plus one times f of x. Okay, nice. But now let's split this up 
and observe that we'll have f of x plus k times f of x plus another f of x. I just split that k plus 1 times f of x up. But now let's apply our induction hypothesis to rewrite this f of x term as f of x plus k times f of x. So that's going to leave us with f of x plus k times f of x plus f of x plus k times f of x. Okay, so we've got something that looks like this. But now observe that we simply have f of green box plus f of green box, like that. In other words, we can use the original functional equation up here that we've written in that blue box. Okay, so anyway, that's going to leave us with f of x plus k times f of x. But then applying our induction hypothesis one more time, we'll see that that is simply equal to f of x as needed to finish this proof. Okay, so let's see where we can go from there. So we just got done proving that for all natural numbers n, f of x equals f of x plus n times f of x. And now we're going to move on to the next portion of this solution, which has to do with the functions that are inside of our function f on the right-hand side. And that is, we'll show that x plus n times f of x, which we might name that g sub n of x. So like I said, that's x plus n times f of x is an injective function. In other words, it's a one-to-one -one function. And well, it's going to be an injective function for all natural numbers n. So in other words, that's like a family of injective functions. So let's maybe see how we would do that. So let's suppose that g sub n of x is equal to g sub n of y, but observe that that means that x plus n times f of x is equal to, let's see, y plus n times f of y. But now let's notice that we can apply our functional equation here and repli replace this f of x with f evaluated at x plus n times f of x. And likewise, we can take this f of y and rewrite it as f evaluated at y plus n times f of y. But if we look at that a little bit more carefully, that's going to be f evaluated at g sub n of x, and then f evaluated at g sub n of y. But g sub n of x is equal to g sub n of y. But that means that f of g sub n of x is equal to f of g sub n of y. But that means that these two things are the same, and so we can like cancel them from both sides of the equation. But Notice that that means that all that's left in this equation is x equals y. But starting here at g sub n of x equals g sub n of y and ending at x equals y is exactly what we need for this to be an injective function. And now let's step back and notice that we haven't used the continuity yet, but we're about to use continuity. And we'll use continuity along with the following fact. And that is that if you have an injective function that is also continuous, so I'll just put here that injective plus continuous implies that that function is monotone. So it's either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. So I'll write over here strictly increasing or decreasing. So obviously it has to be one or the other. It can't simultaneously be increasing and decreasing. So now you might say, well, which one is it? Are these sometimes increasing and sometimes decreasing? Or are these all of the time increasing? Or are they all of the time decreasing? Well, we're actually going to show that they are always increasing. So in other words, 
for all natural numbers in, g sub n of x is an increasing function. You might say, well, notice that we assume that f of x was continuous, not that g sub n of x are continuous. But by the construction of the g sub n of x, those are also continuous because they're built out of continuous functions. Okay, so now how can we prove this? Well, it's actually going to happen really, really quickly via the following limit. So let's take the limit as x goes to infinity of g sub n of x. But that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of x plus n times f of x. So observe that this term over here, this n times f of x term, is bigger than zero. We know that that's bigger than zero by the codomain of the function f. So it goes to the interval from zero to infinity, in other words, positive real numbers. But check it out, we're letting x go to infinity of x plus something that's positive. But that means that the limit has to be infinity in the end. Okay, but if you have an infinite limit, a positive infinite limit, then that means that our original function had to be increasing. It's impossible to have a decreasing function that has an infinite limit. So I'll leave it to you to fill in that very, very small detail, but that's fairly straightforward. Okay, so just to reiterate, we're using the fact that any monotone function that has an infinite limit must in fact be a strictly increasing function. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so in addition to the first little result that we proved along this path, we just finished showing that all of these functions g sub n of x, where let's recall this g sub n of x was equal to x plus n times f of x, we're strictly increasing. But what that means is if we have real numbers x and y such that x is less than y, then g sub n evaluated at x is strictly less than g sub n evaluated at y. Okay, but now let's take this equation, or I guess I should say inequality, this g sub n of x is less than g sub n of y, and rewrite it in terms of the definition of g sub n so that we can work with the function f. Okay, so this means that x plus n times f of x is less than y plus n times f of y. And that's true for all natural numbers n. But let's move some things around and notice that that means that n times f of x is less than y minus x plus n times f of y. Okay, great. But now let's observe that since x is assumed to be less than y, that means that this y minus x is bigger than zero. So if we've got this inequality where something is less than a positive number plus something else, then we can get rid of that positive number if we change this strict inequality into, well, a non-strict inequality. In other words, a less than or equal to. So that means what we have here is, well, n times f of x is less than or equal to n times f of y. Getting rid of the n's, we have f of x is less than or equal to f of y. Which means our function f is, well, it's maybe not strictly increasing. It's increasing, but not strictly increasing. But now, let's observe that we haven't really used this first fact in its full power yet. And that's what we want to do now. So let's write down what we can get out of this. So let's take some natural number, I'll call it capital N because it's a special natural number, such that the following inequality holds. So I'm going to write it down and then we'll talk through it a little bit. So we have y minus x is less than n times f of x minus f of y. Okay, good. We'll notice that y minus x is a positive number. So all we really need to do is to pick an n that is very, very large 
so that when you subtract f of y from it, you're larger than y minus x. So just pick an n to be big enough so that this happens. Okay, but now let's rearrange some things and see what we get out of this. So rearranging, we'll have x plus n times f of x is in fact bigger than y plus f of y. But now what we'll do is apply our function f to both sides of this inequality. But applying our function f to both sides of this inequality will turn the strict inequality to a non-strict inequality. That's essentially what we just proved ending at this pink box. Okay, so we have f of x plus n times f of x is bigger than or equal to f of y plus f of y. Now, what are we going to do from here? Well, from here, we'll apply our first rule. So notice that our first rule will give us the following. So over here on the left-hand side, we have this is equal to f of x. Over here, here on the right-hand side, we have this is equal to f of y. But now putting this together, we have f of x is bigger than or equal to f of y. So that's simply by looking at the extreme sides of this inequality that we just proved. So let's put a green box around that. Okay, but what do we have? Well, putting this green and this pink box together, we have f of x is less than or equal to f of y, which is less than or equal to f of x. Oh, but that held for all arbitrary choices of x and y in the ordering that x is less than y. But the only way for this to occur is for f of x to be equal to f of y. So here we have f of x equals f of y. But again, that's happening for all choices of x and y in this ordering, which means that f must be a constant function. So we have f of x equals a constant. Now, well, you might say, well, what constant is it equal to? Well, by looking at this functional equation over here, what we'll see is that any constant that we will choose will satisfy this functional equation. So it actually can be any constant, well, as long as you choose it as a positive real number. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.